Betco delivers total floor care solutions for proven performance and durability. From finishes to strippers and cleaners to restorers, Betco has the innovative answers to reduced labor costs, increased efficiency, and optimized processes. The life cycle of floor care reflects the stages of maintenance processes that a typical floor undergoes as it is stripped, coated, maintained, and then eventually stripped again. A properly coated and maintained floor can virtually last indefinitely. Most floors, however, are subjected to excessive traffic and soils and a less than adequate maintenance program. This causes the life of the protective coating to be shortened dramatically. This video addresses all phases in the life cycle of floor care, routine, interim, and restorative maintenance. Proper routine maintenance procedures are required to extend the time between interim and restorative maintenance procedures and to maintain the desired appearance level of the floor, which can only be achieved when the coating is as clean and smooth as possible. Let's get started on the proper procedures for routine maintenance. When working with any cleaning chemical, Remember to wear the proper PPE and follow all other health and safety precautions. Lastly, before starting any work, place the appropriate wet floor signs in areas to be cleaned. Thoroughly vacuum all floor matting to remove soils and prevent them from being tracked onto the floor. Then remove the matting so the floor can be cleaned. A long handle scraper or a putty knife should be used to remove stickers, gum, and other debris adhered to the floor surface. Using a clean, dry dust mop, Carefully sweep the entire floor surface to remove soils, then dispose of them properly. Failure to remove soils will damage the floor finish film and can cause premature deterioration of the finish. Fill an automatic scrubber with cool water and the selected Betco floor cleaner at the proper dilution rate. Attach a red scrub pad or similarly abrasive pad to the scrubber. With the squeegee down, the vacuum motor on and brushes engaged, scrub the entire floor area at a moderate pace. Allow floor to dry before removing wet floor signs or performing further maintenance. If the area is smaller or an auto scrubber is not available, use a mop and bucket, a standard floor machine and wet dry vacuum. Mop on the cleaning solution and allow it to dwell for five minutes. Scrub with the floor machine using a red or similarly abrasive scrub pad and then pick up the liquid with the wet dry vac. Again, allow the floor to dry before removing wet floor signs or performing further maintenance. When using a daily cleaner alone no longer produces the desired level of appearance, it is time to use a restorer product on the floor. Betco One Step Restorer cleans and conditions the finish for burnishing, which will enhance the appearance and slip resistance. Betco One Step Restorer can be applied using a mop or automatic scrubber. We will be using an automatic scrubber to demonstrate this procedure. Prepare the area to be restored in the same manner as when performing routine maintenance. Fill the automatic scrubber solution tank with cool water and Betco One Step Restorer per label directions. Attach a red scrub pad to the automatic scrubber and scrub the entire area. Once dry, burnish the floor until all the scuff marks, black heel marks, and scratches are removed to achieve a smooth, clean, highly reflective shine. Always burnish after using Betco One Step Restorer, selecting the proper burnishing pad and burnishing machine. Dust mop the entire area to remove any residue from the floor. Another routine maintenance method is spray buffing. Prepare the area in the same manner as when cleaning the floor. Betco's specially formulated Easy Task Spray Buff is designed to remove scuffs and black marks and is effective when used with low-speed floor machines and the recommended pad. Apply Easy Task sparingly to the area being buffed using a floor machine and a white pad. Buff the area until all soils, scuffs, and black marks are removed. After spray buffing has been completed, the area should be dust mopped to remove any residue from the floor. Let's review what we have accomplished. Routine maintenance will make your floors look better and last longer. When performed properly, routine maintenance procedures will extend the time between top scrubbing or stripping your floors. Remember the steps we performed. One, routine cleaning, including vacuuming, mats, dust mopping, damp mopping, or using an automatic scrubber. Two using a restorer, and three, spray buffing. When using a daily cleaner alone no longer produces the desired appearance level, it will be necessary to move on to the next phase of the life cycle of floor care, interim maintenance, commonly called top scrub and recoat. Let's get started on the proper procedures for interim maintenance. When working with any cleaning chemical, remember to wear the proper PPE and follow all other health and safety precautions. Lastly, before starting any work, place the appropriate wet floor signs in areas to be cleaned. Prepare the floor per regular maintenance practices, such as dust mopping and removing any large debris before top scrubbing. 
Now you're ready to begin the scrub and recoat process. Top scrubbing can be performed dry if using orbital technology with a maroon pad, and the soil load on the floor is minimal, making sure to rinse floor of residue before coating. If soil load is heavy, we suggest using a damp or wet top scrub method. To damp top scrub with orbital scrubber, attach a maroon scrub pad to the appropriate orbital equipment filled with cool water and scrub the area, making sure that an even layer of finish is being removed. If glossy spots begin to appear after scrubbing, slow down or check the pad, as it may be time to change it due to finish loading. Once the area has been sufficiently top scrubbed, either with damp or dry method, rinse with warm water to ensure all residue has been removed before applying finish. This rinse can be accomplished with an auto scrubber or mop and bucket. If performing a wet top scrub, fill the auto scrubber with cold water and Betco Best Scrub or Daily Scrub SC at appropriate dilutions. Attach a green, blue, or maroon pad to an auto scrubber to top scrub floor. In the wet scrub procedure, we recommend a double scrub to ensure all embedded soil is removed. This is accomplished by applying the top scrub solution with the squeegee up and the vac motor off over a section of the floor, allowing the solution to dwell as you scrub the area. As you begin the second pass, drop the squeegee and turn on the vac motor. Pick up the solution and then check the floor for a consistent look. If there is still embedded dirt and discoloration, the floor most likely needs to be stripped. For obstructed areas or if an auto scrubber is not available, use a Betco floor machine and a wet dry vac. Apply the top scrub solution with a mop and bucket. Scrub the floor with a standard floor machine using a green, blue, or maroon pad and recover the solution with the wet dry vac. Next, perform a detail rinse with warm water to ensure all soils and old finish are picked up before applying new finish. The detail rinse can be accomplished with an auto scrubber or a mop and bucket. If the floor is clean, you are ready to apply new finish. Allow the floor to dry. A fan may be used to speed this process. Check the floor with the palm of your hand to be sure there isn't any residue that may interfere with the new floor finish. If a white powder comes off on your hand, you will need to detail rinse again. Your objective is to have a clean, dry, film-free floor before beginning application of the new finish. The floor is now ready to be coated. Select the appropriate Betco floor finish based on the maintenance schedule and gloss desired. Using a mop and bucket method for applying floor finish, equip the mop with a rayon, synthetic, or flat finish mop head. Use a can liner in the mop bucket for easy cleanup and to avoid contamination. Pour the finish directly on the mop head. Remove the mop and wring slightly to avoid heavy spots and begin coating the floor. There are different techniques for applying the finish, but we recommend the following. First, box out the area to be finished, but no larger than 8 feet by 20 feet. Halfway through, remember to flip the mop to avoid streaking from lesser amounts of finish. When finish application begins to thin, reapply finish to the head in the mop bucket. Normally, two coats of finish will be applied during this process. Keep the first coat about one tile's width away from the wall, and then coat all the way to the edge on your second coat. After 10 minutes of drying, you can increase the airflow in the room by using a floor fan. Position the fan toward the ceiling to circulate the air. Conventional floor finishes will require approximately 30 minutes to dry under normal temperature and humidity conditions. Elevated temperature and humidity may extend the dry time. Let's review what we have demonstrated. When a floor doesn't respond anymore to spray buffing, burnishing, or other routine maintenance, it's time to remove and replace the top dirty layers of finish. Remember the steps we perform during interim maintenance. One, prepare the area to be scrubbed. Two, prepare equipment and chemicals, if using the wet method. Three, perform a top scrub. Four, detail rinse. And five, apply new finish. After completing the interim maintenance phase of the life cycle of floor care, maintain the floor using the proper routine maintenance procedures. Over time, traffic and soils take their toll on the finish and the routine and interim maintenance procedures no longer produce the desired results. When this happens, it is time for restorative maintenance, or the process of stripping and recoating. Let's get started on the proper procedures for restorative maintenance. When working with any cleaning chemical, remember to wear the proper PPE and follow all other health and safety precautions. Lastly, before starting any work, place the appropriate wet floor signs in areas to be cleaned. Prepare the floor per regular maintenance practices, such as dust mopping and removing any large debris before starting the stripping process. Now you're ready to begin the strip and recoat process. Fill a mop bucket with stripping solution properly diluted with cool water and according to label directions. 
Use a doodle bug and stripping solution or Axit baseboard stripper along the edges and hard to reach areas. Then squeegee the solution into the path of the scrubber or wet vac for pickup. Apply the stripper solution freely to the rest of the floor with a standard all-purpose mop and allow it to dwell for 10 minutes. Be careful not to let the solution dry. If the stripping solution does dry, simply apply more solution to the area. Attach an appropriately sized black stripping or maroon pad to the automatic scrubber or orbital machine. To ensure all existing finish is removed, we recommend a double scrub method. Start scrubbing with the squeegee up and the vac motor on. On the second pass, drop the squeegee and turn on the vac motor, ensuring all or most of the stripping solution is removed. The stripping procedure just described for the auto scrubber can also be used with a Betco Bertha stripping machine and a wet dry vac or auto scrubber. For obstructed areas or if any of the previously mentioned equipment is not available, use a floor machine and a wet dry vac to strip the floor. Apply the stripping solution with an all-purpose mop. Scrub the floor with a standard floor machine using a black stripping pad and recover the solution with wet dry vac. Next, perform a detail rinse with warm water to ensure all soils from old finish are picked up before applying new finish. The detail rinse can be accomplished with an auto scrubber or a mop and bucket. If the floor is clean, you are ready to apply new finish. Allow the floor to dry. A fan may be used to speed this process. Check the floor with the palm of your hand to be sure there isn't any residue that may interfere with a new floor finish. If a white powder comes off on your hand, you will need to detail rinse again. Your objective is to have a clean, dry, film-free floor before beginning application of the new finish. The floor is now ready to be coated. Select the appropriate Betco floor finish based on the maintenance schedule and gloss desired. Use the procedures outlined earlier in interim maintenance to properly coat the stripped floor. Normally, four to six coats are required. Let's review what we have demonstrated. When a floor no longer responds to routine and interim maintenance procedures, it is time to completely remove and replace all old layers of finish. Remember the steps we perform during restorative maintenance. One, prepare the area to be stripped. Two, prepare equipment and chemicals. Three, scrub area and pick up solution. Four, detail rinse. And five, apply new finish. After completing the restorative maintenance phase of the life cycle of floor care, maintain the floor using the proper routine and interim maintenance procedures. Keep your floors safe and looking cleaner longer with Betco Floor Care Procedures and Products.